We're going to get started. So uh, I would like to introduce Brent Langston, who is the Director of Platform Architecture at Cloud Passage. Um, that's the whole introduction. So Brent. <laughs> hey there. I'm Brent Langston, and I work at Cloud Passage. We are a security company, and we help secure the cloud. And even better, I think we try to help. Is this better? OK. I think we try and help accelerate security enablement in the cloud. So um, that's the pitch on what we do. What this talk is about, however, is just applying security principles in the cloud and starting to think about the, uh, the things that you have at your disposal that you haven't really had before. How many of you guys, uh, at least a dozen times today, have heard the word DevOps so far? All right, cool. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a little bit overused. I'm probably going to continue that trend just a little bit. Uh, hopefully not, not too painfully, though. How many of you guys uh, have heard of Agile? You practice Agile, it's, it's uh, accelerating uh, your workflow just a little bit. Uh, you think you know, it's a pain day to day, but uh, for the most part, it's way better than it used to be. Um, so these, these practices have evolved over time, right? And they've been given terms. Uh, and where we are today versus where we were 10 years ago looks very different versus where we were 20 years ago, 30 years ago looks wildly different. Well, the same can be said about security. Uh, in security, 30 years ago, it pr basically didn't exist. You were on the internet or you were just figuring out how to get on the internet and no one was doing anything in any kind of secure way. Uh, 10 years ago, uh, security, hey, this is, an, this is important, we should pay attention to this. And so we would hire, companies would hire experts and they would put together teams and these security engineers would come along and tell you all the things that you're doing wrong. And so you as a developer, you as a, an ops person, you as an engineer would have to go back to the drawing board and redo everything uh, that you had just worked so hard to do. Today, I think the landscape is shifting again, just like with DevOps, just like with Agile, just like with uh, all the other evolutions that we've seen in the tech space, we're seeing an evolution in security where we want security to be at the front of the pipeline. We want you to consider security from the outset and design, design your application with security in mind from the beginning then security teams can incorporate with the rest of the engineers and, and they can help you in this process and, we can, and security engineers can give you tools that can make this process easy. So uh, you guys know how easy it is to use Amazon, right? Uh, you need a database or a Kinesis or something like that. You can just spin that up with one API call. So we want security to be that easy as well. So this talk is just very generic, but it's talking about security and what we do at Cloud Passage to make it easy, make it elastic. So you're not going to be able to see this slide, unfortunately. Don't worry, there's not a lot to, uh, to see on it. I'm just going to describe it for you. Um, it's easier than ever to create new infrastructure. So this is a little code block in Terraform. We're just building an RDS database. So what I want you to see is this is an evolution from 10 years ago when you had to build a database. It was, it was an all-day process. 20 years ago, it was a very manual process, and it probably, if you had to do it 10 times in a row, you'd get 10 different outcomes. So we've gone from that to being able to reproduce something the same way every time, just by uh, tooling. So what I want you to start to think about, though, is Every time you, cr you produce one of these uh, components of infrastructure, you can just think of it as an object. And with any object, it's going to have some attributes. So take a look at what attributes they provide. You're probably, if you ever build a database with Terraform, you almost certainly take advantage of the name attribute. So the name attribute is how you address the database. Of course you need to know that. So you look at the output, you talk to the endpoint, now you're using your database. Don't stop there though. 
Look at what other attributes you have available to you. There's one here called ARN. Who knows what an ARN is? Amazon resource name, exactly. So it's a unique way to refer to this resource. What can you do with an ARN? You can drop an ARN into an IAM policy. When you think about building security, the, of course, 30-year-old way to do it is to just not do it. The 10-year-old way to do it is to do it in sort of a zone configuration, right? So you have a lot of people, a lot of employees, a lot of engineers who have no sensitive access. You have some employees who have some sensitive access. And then you have a select few employees who have highly sensitive access. Maybe they can access all your data, or maybe they can access the, the most critical parts of your data. And that's really the, the level of granularity that we have become accustomed to. But what if it doesn't have to be that way? What if you can say, this database should be accessible by this individual? Think sudo, but with granular control. You can do that today with IAM, with ARNs, and now it's easy to get at that information. So your code that produces it can now produce an artifact that's an IAM policy. So this is just, again, an example of an IAM policy where we're taking the output, the, art of the uh, attribute of that database that we created, and we're just going to go ahead and create a, an IAM policy to go with it. So this is the mindset shift that I think we all need to start adopting, if you haven't already, and that is build the security to go along with your application. Once you've done that, so this is, again, an implementation detail that uh, is probably unique to us today, but you guys could produce the, something just like this on your own in four hours, probably. We actually have a feature at Cloud Passage. Our application, our SaaS service, uh, is uh, one of its features is you can log into a portal. There's MFA uh, that, that uh, you have to validate and then once you're logged in, there's an event generated on, a, on an event bus. We provide that uh, through our API. So as a consumer, this is any customer, by the way. I'm just another customer of Cloud Passage at this point. As a consumer, we actually wrote something that we called Ghostwriter that watches that event API. And what we do is when we see one of our engineers log in uh, to uh, the Cloud Passage account, we know, we go and we look at all of the resources in Amazon that they should have access to, and we go ahead and attach the policies to their account. So when their ghost port session expires, uh, all those policies automatically detach. So at any given point, what we have is an account. If you have not authenticated in the last few hours, your account has no privilege whatsoever. Uh, if you authenticate through our SaaS service, then we'll, go, we'll come along and immediately attach all of the policies that you need to do your job, and you can log into the AWS console, and you can mess with, to your heart's content, all of the resources that you have access to, but any other resources in the account are untouchable by you. So you don't necessarily get access to critical uh, production data. You can't accidentally terminate that database that, because you checked the wrong line or, or selected the wrong tag. Uh, you're protected by all of that stuff. And if your account is ever compromised, since you haven't logged in and validated uh, through our app, then your account actually has no privilege uh, associated with it. So all, I'm, all this is is just pointing out that we have the resources available, so we should start to think about how we can use these things together, how we can tie them all together, and how we can get to a point where we're doing security the most granular way possible. So I hope you guys have questions, because that's the end of the talk. Uh, it was just an example, and I'm here to answer questions.
So the question was, in our portal, can you integrate it with SAML and OAuth? And, and the answer is yes. Uh, our product does that. Uh, also, of course, the, the AWS console does that as well. 